What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Darium's Competitive Pokemon. Going to be rolling another game with my Ninetales GX deck here on PTCGO. I think Ninetales is just such a fun deck to play. Love that there's alternative win conditions with the deck that you can lock someone out of the game with Luminous Barrier. You could even deck them out with Luminous Barrier. I love that you could just take big knockouts with Ninetales GX. If that's more what you're going for, you can spread with Tapu Koko. There's just so many different routes to take with that deck, and I just think it's just such a skill-oriented deck to play. It's very refreshing. Uh, I love Tapu Koko as a Pokemon. I think this card's just one of the best cards printed right now and just goes so well in so many different archetypes. I love that the deck could just set up with Beacon so easily, playing four copies of Beacon Vulpix. I mean, what more do you want? This deck has just got a lot of stuff going for it, and I love just the way that you know, the thinking involved with the deck. Playing against the Tapu Bulu GX deck right now, looks like Tapu Bulu is a pretty popular archetype right now. I've been playing against quite a bit of these lately, and I think it's just, uh, it's proven itself to be one of the top decks in format, which is exciting to me, because I think Tapu Bulu is a sweet archetype. I actually have three secret rare Tapu Bulus myself, so very excited about that. Uh, you know, in real cards, we got three secret rare Tapu Bulu between Kirsten and I, so that's pretty exciting too. Uh, not secret rare, I guess the rainbow rare ones. And I, I just think the rainbow rares are so cool, especially to play with in the decks. I think they're a lot of fun. So that's exciting too. Uh, I think that Tapu Bulu, strong archetype. You know, it's got uh, you know some decent matchups. Uh, and I think it's a, the kind of deck that can hang with like most things in format. So I think a lot of people are hype on it for that. Uh, that's the reason I like Ninetales too, though, because I think Ninetales can kind of hang with most decks in format. So it should be interesting to see you know, what we get going here as far as how this matchup pans out. Because I think that both these decks should be pretty, you know, pretty evenly matched. My opponent could take big one-hit knockouts against me if they want to. I can, you know, go in and spread and devolve them if I want to. So we each got our own stuff going on. I got a little bit of an awkward start here, you know, but that's okay. Didn't get the turn one Bridget, but you don't always get the turn one Bridget. Maybe my opponent will, by some miracle, not get the turn two Vika Volt, but it seems like every Vika Volt deck that I play against on PTCGO gets the turn two Vika Volt, which is super annoying. So, uh, probably anticipating an incoming turn two Nature's Judgment here, which is just what this deck does all the time, even though I have no idea how they do it. This deck does not play a whole lot of supporter cards anymore. You know, I guess that, you know, three copies of Skyla definitely helps. Uh, I see like quite a few lists are playing like three copies of Skyla, but even with that, like I do not hit the third two Nature's Judgment nearly as often as I see people do on PTCGO. So let's see what my opponent has got going on. I am anticipating by the fact that they attached that Grass Energy from hand. That means that they did not get it. Yep. And they look at that. They don't have a supporter card in hand either. So that means that they stuck and they're going to have to deal with the fact that I'm about to be very annoying. So that is fine with me. I'm going to take this time here to go ahead and bridge it then just because, um, you know, they gave me that free turn to be able to do this. So I'm going to grab another Vulpix and another Tapu Koko just because this makes my board position so much better. Having a bench Tapu Koko here. So now that I have two people to Tapu Koko, you know, uh, just is, is really great. I don't really want to evolve my Ninetales because then my opponent could just like, you know, Guzman up and Bulu it next turn. And that's like super annoying. So... I think I am just going to go ahead and just do that. I don't even necessarily want to, you know, I could commit the DCE to my other Tapu Koko. Like, I guess that's fine. Uh, you know, I might have preferred to just keep the options open, but uh, that's that's cool. Let's see. I, I think I retreat here. No, there's no real reason to retreat. Let's just let's just go ahead and flying flip. Either way, you know, going to get knocked out next turn with the manual energy attachment. So this way I got the Tapu Koko ready to go here. I doubt my opponent plays any way to heal these Grubbins. So the longer I flying flip, the easier this matchup gets. Because eventually I'm just going to be able to knock out these Grubbins. You know, with Espeon EX, just going to be able to pick everything up and really make my opponent, you know, kind of suffer there. wonder if my opponent's just going for the Charge Bug. Maybe they just top deck that Ultra Ball. Maybe they'll get a Charge Bug. Maybe they'll get a Tapu Lele, grab a Supporter. If they got a Rare Candy in hand, uh, I imagine they just top, top deck that Ultra Ball. Because now they're going to go ahead probably ultra ball their hand down or probably uh you know they're gonna wonder tag they'll grab a supporter probably an n because they probably have things in their hand that they don't want to get rid of so let's see sycamore okay 
Let's see what they go ahead and Sycamore. I guess whatever they had in their hand was not all that valuable. At this point, they're kind of feeling the heats. They're feeling the pressure. They want an energy to be able to knock this thing out. Guzman and energy charge. They discarded two energy, excuse me, energy recyclers. That is tough. I don't really see them being able to win the game without an energy recycler, but that's, uh, that's interesting. They really wanted to draw aggressively here. They wanted to put this Tapu Coco to bed. Uh, they weren't really happy with what I was doing to it. So that's fine. I mean, that's the route my opponent decided to take. So let's just uh, see how this goes here. I am going to try and take a slower route. What I want to do is I am going to try and really stretch my opponent for resources this game. And by doing that, I think I don't want to give them a GX. So this is like a little bit of a weird play, but I don't think I'm actually going to evolve any of these nine tails here because I want to evolve into Luminous Barrier Ninetales, because my opponent already has so many energy committed to the field, and I think I just want to make it like even harder for them to take prizes than it already is, just because they had to discard those two energy recyclers. So I think, like, you know, I don't want to give them easy prizes here, because if I give them easy prizes, you know, that's just going to play into what they want me to do. I could end them here. I could Guzma. I could Sycamore. I do play a lot of Guzman in this deck, so I think I'm just going to Sycamore, try and get some other things going. I don't really care that I'm ditching those resources. This is fine at this point. And I think I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to Ultra Ball. I want to stabilize my board position. I'm going to get this Turtonator out of here. There's no real reason to play the Turtonator in this matchup. And a Water Energy. I'm going to get the Octillery out, I think. I could get the Octillery out. I could get another Tapu Coco. I think I want to get the Octillery out. Let's get that Octillery out here. And we're just going to slap another Choice Band down. And let's attach an Energy to my Vulpix. And we're going to Abyssal Hand. So now we're stabilized. We got our Octillery in play. This is everything I wanted. I wanted this is perfect. This is exactly what I want here. Because now, you know, I could Rescue Stretcher and bring that Ninetales up into play if I want to. But I didn't want to put the Ninetales GX down. So now, you know, my board position is just so good. My opponent is definitely going to be like, what can I do to win this game? You know, if I just flying flip one more time, then, you know, my opponent really has almost nothing that they're going to be able to do. Because then all I have to do is just Espeon EX everything up. And they are out of options, you know, as far as being able to to pump out, uh, you know, energy charge, you know, damage, because that's just they're they're going to be in a bad spot. I don't really see what they're doing. Uh, and then, you know, once I do that, once I take care of the Vega Volts there, I could just evolve into a Luminous Barrier Nine Tails, and then I've got the game because they just are locked out of the game that way. So this is what I find so fun about playing the Ninetales deck. As you see, like I'm not really trying to win the game in a traditional type like type of way. I'm trying to like run my opponent out of resources. I'm looking at the things they're discarding. I saw that they went ahead. Okay, so they're gonna go ahead and nature's you know, that's a little annoying uh that they did the Tapu Wilderness, but that's fine. Because I am not trying to win the game that way. I am trying to win the game a different way. So let's see, because um, eventually, like, I'm gonna get the luminous barrier nine tails out, and I'm just gonna win like that. So that's like the game plan, more or less. I think uh, maybe I will rescue stretcher. Let's see, three Pokemon from my discard pile to my deck: the Coco, the Coco, and a nine tails. I'm gonna throw those in, and let's just go ahead and abyssal. I think we'll abyssal hand for two first. Hopefully draw into something good. Um, let's see. I could evolve up into Nine Tails, but I'm just worried that that's going to escalate the game in a way that I don't want to do. So, like I said, I'm just going to slow roll this one a little bit longer. This is perfect. This is exactly what we wanted here because we want that Luminous Barrier Nine Tails. Uh, we also want to get. Eventually, you know, we want to get. Let's see. We want to get that Espeon EX into play. So I think I'm going to save the Ultra Ball for. That is tough, though, because then my opponent is just one Lysander away, and they have the Vika Volt here, but I think that that's fine. I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to Ultra Ball away the Remoraid and the Water Energy, and I want to grab that. Did I prize? Oh, my gosh. I didn't. Even, I prized two Illuminous Barrier. Nine, I did not even check for that. I'm sorry, guys. So that is tough. Okay. 
I'm going to have to I'm going to have to speed things up here then because that luminous barrier nine tails is kind of the key to me being able to do anything. I'm going to grab another Tapu Coco here and we're just going to bide a little more time. <laughs> just a little more time. Love having that free retreat on the bench, but we are we are going to take one prize here. So maybe we do get the luminous barrier nine tails off the prize. Like that would be sweet. All right, we got an ultra ball. So I can go with Espeon next turn, but if I go with Espeon next turn, then that means that, you know, I'm just in such a weird position uh, because then my opponent's Tapu Bulu is going to be able to knock out my, uh, my Espeon in one hit, but they would have to discard in order to do that. And if they discard, then, you know, they don't have a Vika Volt in play. So like, that's really tough for them. So I think like, you know, maybe that's the route I could take. Ugh, it's just such a tough situation. I wonder what they're going to do. I need to get my Luminous Barrier Nine Tails. I didn't realize that both of those were prized. That is just such a bad, bad thing to have happen right now. You can see that they are charging up this Vika Volt. I wonder if they play a Brock's Grit or something because they don't seem worried about their energy situation. Even though I think that like maybe they should be a little worried, but I guess they don't have any in the discard pile. They just have... You know, they have one, two, three, four. You know, they only have one lightning energy left in deck. So let's see here. I could come in. I think if I come, you know, if I come in with the, if I come in with the Nine Tails GX now, like that is like a pretty decent time to come with the Nine Tails GX, 160 damage. And then I finally knock out this Bulu. And then my opponent probably doesn't have a way to respond to that. So I think that like now is the time to do that you know so like I've waited long enough now I just need to hit an aqua patch so let's abyssal hand hopefully we can get an aqua patch we did get an aqua patch that's good throw that there and then let's put the float stone on my octillery and we're just going to end. I think we have to go in and take care of this Bulu now. My opponent has just been so greedy. Not greedy, but my opponent was very... Oh, well, they were a little greedy early on going for that play where they where they sycamored that energy recycler. And I want to make them pay for it. You know, At this point, they've got to be running a little bit low on energy. So let's see what we can make happen here. I do want to leave maybe one Vulpix just in case I get the Luminous Barrier Nine Tails out. Maybe I mean, I'm not totally sure, but I am gonna I'm gonna wait on that just to wait and see. And I do want a Blizzard Edge here. I don't think that my opponent is gonna be able to whip up a way to knock out my Alola Nine Tails GX this turn. Hey, and there's both my Luminous Barrier Nine Tails. You know, I run two in this list right now, just trying it out, but. Uh, you know, it's supposed to be a little bit more consistent. I suspect that my opponent is going to probably hit into my nine tails here. You know, maybe they get the Bulu. Maybe they do get, uh, you know, if they get a choice ban, I would be a little upset if they get, uh, if they get choice ban, Bulu, energy, strong charge. If they have all of that off of an end of three, you know, then kudos to you, dude. Like, I don't think that there's much else I could have done about this. They do got the grass. They do got the Bulu. You know, they're going to instruct for one. I doubt they're going to be able to get everything that they need. You know, I mean, but what what do I know? I don't know. They haven't played a supporter yet, so I don't know. But I, I really do. Like, I don't think that they can do it. And then, you know, next turn, I need to get... I do need to try and get that, uh, get that Espeon out. They're going to Skyla. Oh, did they, get a, did they get a choice ban off the Skyla? If they get a choice ban off the Skyla, and if they can, I mean, they're probably very close to have running out of energy to strong charge. Like they, they can't. This is going to be the last one. Like I'm pretty sure. I mean, this deck has got to be running out of lightning energies at this point. Most lists are only running five. I saw four in play, so he's going in. You know, maybe he's got both the energy he needs to knock out this Nine Tails. That would be pretty impressive does okay so like he's got to be tapped by now he's got two three four five you know five lightning energies that's got to. i cannot believe that he got all of that off the end of three 
that's fine. The deck plays a lot of Skyla. It's really it's intended to do that. But I need to find a way to make it so that my opponent cannot retaliate. Uh, let's see. If I Guzma something up, like that could be annoying for my opponent. Uh, my opponent's only got one prize left to take. There's no way... Let's see. I need to evolve this Vulpix into something. I can't just go ahead... Let's see. I think I have to evolve it into the Ninetales. And then I think I have to Guzma up the Oranguru. And I have to attach this here. Um, if my opponent is able to... I mean, there's no way they're going to be able to get... They would have to get... Um, let's see, if they got Guzma energy, and then if they could just strong charge one more energy, then they can they can attack with Vika Volt for game. So I think I... Do I bring up the Vika Volt and just make it so that my opponent... No, because they could Guzma, and you know what I mean? So like, let's just see here. We're going to Guzma up the Oranguru. Try to make it as weird as possible for my opponent to win this game. Can attach the choice band here, the float stone here, and let's just abyssal hand for three. See what we could do. We got an aqua patch and a choice band and an ace of Okay, and let's just go ahead and we're gonna ice blade over to that Vika Volt there, <laughs> and we're gonna hope that my opponent can't respond. Uh, let's see, what's my energy situation like? Oh my gosh, uh, this is my last DC. I do have four waters left, so I can still get some things going, but this is my last double colorless energy. Opponent does have a grass energy. They attach it to the Bulu. I, there's no way they play any more energy. They'd have to have like a Brock's Grit in hand or something. I don't really know what win condition my opponent is going for here. You know, I'm pretty sure two, you know, two energy charges about as much as these decks play. So... Uh, you know, I was definitely unfortunate there with my opponent being able to rip everything they needed off that end of three and knocking out that Alola Ninetales GX. It's also a little unfortunate prizing both my Luminous Barrier Ninetales. I wanted to make my opponent have to come up with this Vika Volt to knock out the Luminous Barrier Ninetales. Like, that would have been good for me. Let's see. So, yeah, my opponent does have that. And now they're pretty much just, like, waiting for game, I guess? Like, this is stressful for sure. But is my opponent going to be able to get this Oranguru out of the active position? Like, I'm not totally sure. They're probably hoping that I knock it out. Uh, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to make them get it out of the active position. They have 19 cards in their deck. I'm not sure if they play any copies of Switch or Escape Rope or anything like that. Ooh, what's up, Mikey? We got Mikey down here in on the action, looks like. What up? You could be doing any work down here, Mikey? I'm going to be streaming. He'll be streaming. Sweet. Well, I'm about done. I'm tired. It's about my last game, so we're trying to grind this one out with the Lola Nine Tails. Very close here. It is crunch time. My opponent probably has. Oh man, no way! My opponent's got the Tapu Coco GX. They're going to be able to maneuver all this lightning energy onto the Tapu Coco if they want to to guarantee to get a different Pokemon into the active position. So I wonder if they're going to swap that lightning energy off right now. I uh, imagine that they will. But then that's that's still a weird position because they're gonna be they're gonna have to be able to find a last energy here for game, and I'm gonna take out their Vika Volt next turn. So their Guzma, oh, do they have it? Do they have it? I mean, there's no way. I mean, he does what he can. He can come in with the Coco. Is he instructed? Did he? He already attached energy. No, he didn't attach energy for turn. So, let's see. Does he get it? I mean, he's got to be almost out of energy at this point. Like, the dude, four, five, six, seven, he's probably got... No, so th th these decks typically only play, like, seven grass energy, and he's used both his special charge, so... Or both his, uh... You know, both his things. Okay, this is cool. So I got, you know, I got Acerola. I could Acerola that thing up. And actually, that dude just pretty much served me up game, because here we go. Because <laughs> he brought the Octillery into the active position, so that's pretty awesome. Because I can come in here and knock out this dude in one hit. Uh, I think I want to Ace Arola the Octillery up, just because like that is gonna be a little bit of a. I think it's a, you know, liability being there. So I'm gonna just bring in the Nine Tails, 
And then we are going to just hope that my opponent can't, uh, can't respond here. Let's just Blizzard Edge for 190. And uh, discard the double colorless energy. And cross our fingers and hope that my opponent can't take this last prize next turn. Uh, I don't think that they'll be able to, like, I yeah, I mean, they have the Vika Volt here, but what are they going to knock out? I mean, they have the Tapu Koko, you know, but they're going to need another energy in hand and a Guzma. And they just used Guzma last turn. Uh, I know they got the Coco GX in their hand. I know that they can move that. I've got game on board next turn with Ice Blade on that Vika Volt. If my opponent doesn't do anything, uh, I know that they're going to move the energy to the Coco. They're going to bring the Coco into the active, but then... You know, they would also have to have Guzma and an energy in their hand. And I think the dude is out of energy. Like, I think these decks typically play seven grass and five lightning. Does he have an energy left in deck? No, he doesn't. He's strong charges. There's nothing there. I know what you got in deck, dude. I know you played both your energy charge early. He's going to end. So let's see here. My opponent's going to end me to one, but I've got game on board, and I'm pretty sure you're not getting an energy off that end of one. You just strong charged and failed. So. Uh, looks like Socrates, you might have played yourself and uh, just discarded those energy charges early. I knew that that was going to come back to bite you. I knew it. I've been known that. And now look at you. You got two energies on your Tapu Koko GX. And here we go. So we got it. Thank you all for watching the video. Super excited there that we were able to pull that one out. Things were looking a little bit sketchy. Just, you know, prizing two of those, you know, Alola Ninetales with a Luminous Barrier. My opponent ripping the absolute craziest hand off that end of three, being able to respond to my Alola Ninetales GX when I finally decided to bring it active. So I think that was just a really good game. I mean, showcasing two very top tier decks, you know, kind of duking it out. And, uh, you know, just a very close matchup in general. So thank you all for watching. Let me know what you think of Alola Ninetales GX and Tapu Bulu Vika Volt in the comments below. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. Peace.